Mars is quite possibly one of the most well-known and widely referenced planets in our solar system, appearing over and over in various forms of mainstream cultural works. That is not surprising in the least, since this red planet is recognized as the most comparable to Earth among all objects in our solar system, and in distant geological ages, it truly acted as a twin sister to our own world. Hi everyone! How have we, as human beings, managed to explore and study Mars over the course of our history? All of you watching this channel, today I plan to walk you step by step through the entire story, starting with the earliest telescopes and moving all the way up to the Mars rovers Perseverance and Zhurong. Let's get started. The Mystery of the Red Planet This bright crimson world has always drawn people's attention and curiosity. In numerous mythologies, Mars bears the names of deities associated with war and fire, conjuring a fierce scarlet image. Human awareness of Mars likely stretches all the way back to the Paleolithic era, and records indicate that in ancient Egypt and Babylon, people had already calculated how Mars traverses the heavens. The very first individual to study Mars through a telescope was Galileo. By the 17th century, Mars's polar ice caps had already been identified, and in the 19th century, astronomers created the first maps of the Martian surface. Around that time, spectral analysis revealed the presence of water vapor in Mars's atmosphere. Later, in the latter half of the 19th century, astronomers reported spotting canals on Mars, sparking a huge public sensation. Based on these discoveries, scientists began to speculate that Mars offered a habitat suitable for life resembling that on Earth, raising the possibility that a civilization might be thriving there, or at least had thrived in the distant past. For a full century, Mars served as a perfect backdrop for adventure novels like Edgar Rice Burroughs' John Carter. Writers also expressed that Martians would invade our planet, as famously portrayed in the H.G. Wells cult classic The War of the Worlds. The 20th century brought disappointment for those who insisted Martians were real. First, it was discovered that Mars's atmosphere is extremely thin and primarily made up of carbon dioxide. Next, researchers learned that Mars is generally very cold from one end to the other. Although there are some mild days in tropical zones during the Martian summer, the planet's average surface temperature sits around minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. In other words, it became apparent that advanced life forms, let alone intelligent beings, likely cannot survive there. During the 1960s, numerous space probes were launched to investigate Mars in greater depth. The first probe to successfully capture images of Mars was Mariner 4. The picture quality was not remarkable, but at least it confirmed the presence of craters on Mars. Telescopes on Earth could barely detect those craters before. Incidentally, Mariner 4 was also the very first probe to photograph another planet at close range. Discoveries and Letdowns A major breakthrough in Martian exploration occurred in 1976. Two probes, launched as part of the legendary Viking program, managed to reach Mars. These spacecraft also transmitted the very first high-resolution photos of the Martian surface back to Earth. This delivered a final blow to those who claimed a highly developed civilization existed on Mars. The images revealed that the famous canals, which had sparked debate for a full century, simply were not there. In the end, it became clear that those canals were an optical illusion caused by flaws in older telescopes. The Mars, photographed by Viking, resembled a desert tinted with a reddish hue. There was no sign of life, yet they did observe cracks and depressions hinting at dried-up riverbeds. In truth, even back then there were scientists suggesting that Mars was once entirely different, possessing an atmosphere, rivers, and seas much like Earth. Today that viewpoint is fully acknowledged as correct, and it is embraced as the mainstream in the scientific community. Numerous other probes have been sent to Mars as well. Thanks to these vehicles, we've gathered a great deal of knowledge about the Red Planet. Some scientists claim that, at present, we understand the Martian surface better than Earth's ocean floors. It is also known that Mars holds ice not only in its polar caps but underground, raising the possibility of hidden subsurface lakes. There is a good chance that bodies of water concealed by Mars's harsh environment could preserve a biosphere. 
Of course, that scenario hinges entirely on the existence of living organisms on Mars in the first place. When we examine images taken by space probes, we notice a striking difference between Mars's two hemispheres. The northern hemisphere is relatively flat and consists mostly of plains, while the southern hemisphere is mountainous and covered with numerous craters. There are various hypotheses concerning what caused the two hemispheres to be so asymmetric. According to one idea, Vastitis borealis, which covers much of Mars's northern half, might actually be a colossal impact crater. If that is correct, it would be the largest crater in the entire solar system. This concept also provides a clue in explaining how Mars lost much of its atmosphere and water. In short, the impact from a celestial object hitting Mars may have stripped away its atmosphere. New Findings and Fresh Mysteries At present, three rovers are active on Mars's surface, the well-known Curiosity alongside Perseverance and Zurong. Of the operating Mars rovers, Curiosity has been functioning the longest. We have already highlighted its data in a separate video because the findings deserve individual attention. For that reason, let's just briefly review the key points in this video. Curiosity was the first rover to drill into the surface of Mars. Through those operations, we gained fresh understanding of Martian soil. It also successfully examined the beds of evaporated bodies of water and observed intermittent releases of methane into the Martian atmosphere. It could be a possible sign of life. Perseverance primarily focuses on searching for life, or at least traces of past life. This rover has managed to collect a wide range of rock samples. Through these samples, we will be able to learn a wealth of details about Martian geology. The helicopter Ingenuity, carried aboard Perseverance, allowed us to achieve the very first powered flight in the atmosphere of another planet, even though it was controlled from afar. This was also done to acquire an abundance of stunning photographs of the Martian surface. China's Mars rover Zhirong is officially still active, but it has entered a dormant phase to endure the planet's harsh winter. Through this rover, we were able to examine Mars's magnetic field in particular detail. Mars's magnetic field is extremely weak. It appears that Mars lacks a liquid outer core, so electrical currents do not form, preventing the generation of a strong magnetic field. Even so, a magnetic field does exist to some extent. Long ago, that field may have been far stronger, helping the planet retain its atmosphere more effectively. It might be that Mars's planetary dynamo shut down and caused the field to vanish, possibly as part of the catastrophic aftermath of the impact that created Vastitis Borealis. Beyond the rovers on the Martian surface, there are eight satellites circling the planet in orbit. Thanks to those orbiters, we have uncovered valuable insights into the planet's surface features, how it interacts with the solar wind, and the nature of its atmosphere. Of course, Mars rovers supply priceless data and remarkable photos of the landscape, but orbiters bring their own advantages. For instance, they observe Mars from a vantage point high above the surface. There are still countless unknowns when it comes to Mars. Why the planet lost its atmosphere, surface water, and magnetic field remains a mystery. A collision with a large celestial body is only one possible theory. It may simply be that Mars has too little mass and, as a result, a weak gravitational pull. As a result, it could not hold on to its atmosphere or support a significant magnetic field. Yet we know of bodies like Titan, Saturn's moon, which lacks a magnetic field and is far smaller than Mars, yet still holds an atmosphere. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. The greatest Martian puzzle is clearly whether life ever existed there, and if it might still be present even today. We parted ways with the playful idea of kind, charming Martians or vicious monster-like Martians a long time ago. Still, is there a chance that even bacteria could dwell in, for instance, a subsurface lake? All of those questions will be answered in the future, one way or another. Everyone, please keep supporting this channel as we move forward. By following this channel, you will stay on top of the intriguing updates about Mars, our mysterious neighbor in space. We'll say goodbye for now. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Farewell!